This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video, and Jesus fucking Christ, I have had so many people that have been either begging, suggesting, asking, when are you going to do another World Chalice deck list for the updated format for the September 18th, 2017 ban list, aka Forbidden and Limited list. I've had so many people going through every hoop that they can to contact me on any form of medium that they think that I might see it on, which is like the email address in the description of all my videos, my Facebook fan page, the comment sections of all of my World Chalice combat tutorial videos for the new format. And it's like, I mean, I get it. I mean, I, I'm very pleased that you guys hold me in such high regard in terms of like the ideas and like the, like the thought processes I put behind my deck builds but like damn at least let me test it for a little bit first don't i'm not gonna have a deck list literally like two days out of the games no it's, it's, these things take time you gotta put things out that aren't shit you know things like that but anyway so this is going to be my updated world chalice deck profile for the september 18th 2017 format uh and basically my preemptive list for uh for how i think the deck should be played in this sort of uh in this sort of environment essentially um is there's, there's a lot of things that i am still testing about the deck uh, but a lot of the things that I've implemented into my more recent combo tutorials are in this build. So if you're looking for a list that projects basically what I'm thinking of in terms of when I'm going into these combo tutorials that you guys like so much, then uh, then this is definitely it. But anyway, I'm going to stop rambling and go straight into the deck list. This is a 42 card deck list, um, and it starts with three World Legacy World Chalice. This is obvious, obviously a three of. I mean, Jesus, you would definitely max out on this card. Uh, three copies of Lee the World Chalice Fairy, and the only World Chalice Vanilla that I'm playing is Chosen by the World Chalice. I was originally testing Chosen and Beckoned because I was thinking with Rescue Rabbit in the deck I could do some things like Rescue Rabbit into Beckons and make like Tornado Dragon pop a card when going second um, and doing stuff like that. But with I guess to Emerald not in the format anymore, there's just literally no reason to be running Beckoned anymore, uh, unfortunately, for combos. Chosen is just far superior to it because of the fact that Chosen can be summoned out of your deck off E-Telly alongside Rescue Rabbit, alongside World Legacy, World Chalice, so it by far has the most utility on top of all of the uh, of all of the World Chalice vanilla at this point. Last format it was beckoned simply because of Digesto Emerald's existence, but now it's Chosen because Chosen accesses more cards, or is accessed by more cards rather, because E-Telly is now officially like a combo extender and a starter as well. But the 10th World Chalice name in the deck is uh, one copy of World Chalice Guard Dragon. I kind of want to bump this up to two, but the list is already at 42 cards. Um, it was at two in my previous build, but uh, with the added amount of starter cards that this deck has, now with three Rabbit and all that other stuff, like the, the heightened number of starter cards that this deck has access to, um, you can basically get away with skimping away on less of the World Chalice names. Um, and like this is just one of the ones that you want to be comboing with. But you never really want to see it in your hands, ultimately. Especially with Dryden not in the format anymore, either. Like, this card was really strong against Dryden. Um, like, if you, like, got a Link monster on the board, and then they were trying to Dryden you, like, to make you waste resources, and then you'd get them with this, you'd be like, ha, got you. But, uh, at this point, like, that Dryden's bans, that's not an issue. Masterpiece is usually too big of a bitch to deal with, even with this card. Um, and you have other methods for that. And overall, like, this card just is a combo piece and not a starter, so it's it's a card that's better relegated to one, in my opinion. But, three copies of the Agent of Creation Venus alongside the three Mystical Shine Balls. This should be pretty clear and obvious. I think that these are definitely the way forward in the list, even without access to Digesto Emerald. Like, just having one card that gives you access to four monsters on the field is fantastic. It's just an amazing starter card. The fact that you can get this off Transmodify as well, you can have so many brilliant fusion plays that allow you access into it. Like, this is definitely the strongest normal summon in this deck outside of maybe World Legacy, World Chalice, but even then, I'd argue that this is a better normal summon than anything else in the deck uh, going forward. But, carrying on, we have three copies of Rescue Rabbit. There's literally no reason why you shouldn't be running three of this card. I've had people in my comment section ask me if I was going to be running two or three of this card, and basically, if you watched my last deck profile video on World Chalice, when I was justifying how I was playing three Gofu and the one Rescue Rabbit, you basically already should have gotten your answer there of why I would definitely be paying, playing 3 Rescue Rabbit in the new format list, because you're trying to maximize the amount of games you're able to play with this deck, which means that you want to be able to draw cards that are starter cards and extend your play and all that as many games as possible. You don't want any games where you're going to be drawing cards that aren't starter cards or anything like that. If you draw duplicates of Rescue Rabbit, it's fine. Lee lets you recycle cards like out of your hand to get it back. 
Uh, there's so many different things that like factor into it. Like if you're rescue rabbiting and have other combo pieces, like you're most likely going into a firewall dragon play, which means that you can get the rabbits out of your hand with firewall dragon and then use them for other link materials. Like there's no, there shouldn't be any sort of like real issue of bricking, especially with a card like this, even though it is a hard once per turn effect. Um, and like you're able to summon chosen out of your deck with it. You're able to summon uh, mystical shine balls out of your deck if you drew too many chosens. Like it's just such a good starter card and a good extender. I don't like rescue ferret in the deck at all. I'm not playing any of that because that card's not as good as Rabbit, because Rabbit is a starter card, and that's what this deck needed more of. Uh, so being able to get you into more starter cards, getting you into the vanillas out of your deck, the World Chalice vanillas, is a fantastic use for a Rabbit, and is definitely something that I'm playing three of in this list. Also, three Gofu. I'm still playing three Gofu in this list. You could probably trim this down to two, and it probably wouldn't be that big of an issue. Um, maybe, like, trim it down to two and put in something like the second World Chalice Guard Dragon, or maybe, th uh, like, the third copy of the uh, next card, or maybe an extra Garnet or something just to make your Brilliant Fusion a little bit more alive. I don't know. There's a lot of variations that can be done with this uh, that actually... Um, like, Gofu isn't necessarily as important of a 3 of in this build because of the fact that we have 3 Rabbit now, so we have a lot of additional starters, and then also Etelli is a starter as well. But it, again, goes back to that same point that I was harking on before, whereas I'm going to max out on every card that lets me start plays so that I don't have any games where I cannot play my deck. That's the thing, is that this deck is already not, like, the highest of tiers. It's still very strong being a very, very potent Link deck, and being able to do a bunch of degenerate things with Firewall Dragons and Ningirsu and stuff like that. But still, it's a deck that is basically coming from behind. It's fighting from the lower tiers up. This is like a strong tier 1.5 deck at best in the current format. Like, So you want to maximize your ability to play the game before you start trying to do any kooky kinky shit. And so Gofu being at 3, alongside 3 Rabbit, alongside 3 Venus, alongside 3 like all these other cards, is what maximizes your statistical chances of being able to play the game, and that is what you want to have. You don't want to be losing any games to not being able to play the game, because you're already going to be having a hard time playing against things like Masterpiece anyway, and you're going to be taking losses to cards like Masterpiece and stuff like that if you can't out them. So the games that you can't play are going to really sting you if you're not able to play them strictly because of how you built your deck. But anyway... Next monster, two copies of Exodius, the Ultimate Forbidden Lord. Uh, I might bump this to three. Uh, if I were going to bump this to three, it would be by cutting the third Gofu. Um, but this card is kind of a starter, but also not. It's weird. Gofu is a starter, but it's kind of a subpar starter. Whereas this is only a starter if you combine it with literally any other monster in your deck, which is still good. Um, like, you could still combine this with literally any monster that you can summon. Any single monster that you can summon in this deck gets you access into making Exodius a combo piece and also resets some resources. Uh, so that's really good. Like, this card definitely never bricks at all. Like, and it's not a once-per-turn thing to summon it either. So, like, the multiples that you have of this can be summoned and you can just keep recycling resources. Um, this basically just takes the place of Digesto Emerald. And I was even testing this card when Digesto Emerald was legal, but I felt that it was, like, just a little bit too extra because we didn't have as many starters as we do now. Because we got the Rabbits, we got the E-Telly for Chosen because the vanilla changed in the deck and all that sort of stuff. A lot of things just really changed that really started favoring Exodius and made it really just a really good card to be playing in the deck. And there's a lot of really good combos based around this card. So this card's never a brick, essentially, because it combos with, like I said, every single monster in your deck. If you can normal summon any monster and link into any monster, then Exodius is a combo piece because you can just special summon it and then link away with it. Um, so there's a lot of things like that that go into play, but ultimately, I don't know if I would play three of it. Um, like... Maybe if this was a 40 card deck, I'd probably play the third one as like the 41st card. Uh, but the deck is already 42 cards as is, so right now 2 seems fine. Although it is one of the better combo extenders, so like I said, if I was going to make room for the third Exodius, it'd probably be through cutting the third Gofu, because it kind of fills the same sort of role, although you can't really brick if you, dr if you open multiple of these, because you can just keep summoning them. Um, so like, there's that as well, so... Things to consider, but anyway... Uh, I'm only playing one target for Brilliant Fusion now, especially it's only really important to have one now. Uh, Garnet's not important at all anymore with with uh, Digesto Emerald being gone. Like, there were some key plays that Brilliant Fusion allowed you to do by sending Garnet and then being able to revive it with something like Guard Dragon to make Digesto Emerald in some niche combos. Uh, but Lazuli is really the only one that's worth playing now. Um, if you draw it, it's fine. You can usually 
do something to get rid of it, get it out of your hand by like normal summoning it and linking away with it with like a Gofu play or something like that, and then you're able to uh, maybe Exodius it back to your deck. There's there's ways to get around drawing it, uh, but I just I put my faith in not drawing it. Basically, like I've played one Garnet in many decks in the past with three Brilliant Fusion, and it seems perfectly fine. As well as the fact that you only really need one Lazuli in the deck because if you're comboing off and you're drawing cards, you can draw into Exodius, which will put your Seraph Knight and your Lazuli back in deck, making additional Brilliant Fusions live on following turns. So that's also really cool. But anyway. Anyway, the only hand trap I play is Maxi in the main. I don't want to uh, like it, I don't want to have too many non combo cards in my hand, uh, considering that I'm playing the Kaiju's as well. I'm only playing two Kaiju's in this build. I'm only playing Radiant and Gamma Seal because I'm not really building the deck for going second. Um, like it's very much like these are good going second cards, obviously, uh, but like I'm building the deck towards going first. Um, and then having like just a ton of combo cards to try and like combat like going second against boards of things that are problematic. Um, I mean, you can draw kaiju's going like second, and that will favor you. I definitely side more kaiju's because I mean I've already got kaiju's in the engine. Uh, but the main thing these are here for is for when you're going first, um, and you're basically trying to establish like an extra link, and then you know summon gamma seal off your firewall dragon while having the field spell up with four to five counters on it, and you're just trying to negate a bunch of cards. Uh, and Radiant is here because, like, if you draw Gamma Seal, you can still get a plus one off of the field spell, searching Radiant, and then Radiant also generates tokens, which allows you to link summon further, so it just helps you out there in that regard. But that is 28 monsters, if I believe. And then onto the spells, I'm playing two copies of Kyoto Waterfront and two copies of Terraforming for deck thinning purposes. Um, it's just This is just a better ratio than going, like, 3-1, uh, because if you draw a Terraforming, uh, it takes another Waterfront out of the deck, so it makes your deck inherently more consistent. Like, if Terraforming is the first card you see, you play it and you take Waterfront out of your deck, and then you only have one Terraforming, one Waterfront in your deck. So there's two cards left in deck, whereas if you were playing 3-1, um, and you drew Waterfront, like, it just, it's, like, it basically inherently, like, bogs your deck down with extra copies of cards that you don't necessarily need. As well as if you open Double Waterfront, or if you open, like, Terraforming Waterfront, um, Terraforming itself, just to get you, you can resolve two Waterfront searches at a turn, because it's a soft once per turn. Uh, you just have to play an additional copy of Waterfront over the other one. Uh, and so, like, you can uh, you can use Terraforming to gain counters um, on the first Waterfront to make it easier for you. So there's that as well. But these are strictly here for the turn one Kaiju plays to drop Gamma Seal. Uh, because Gamma Seal with counters on the board is, like, insane. It's 100% insane. But anyway, three copies of Brilliant Fusion. Uh, this card is, like, your like one of your best extenders in terms of, like, some starting plays, uh, as well as it gets you access into Lee, so it's basically the 4th, 5th, and 6th copy of Lee. I'm not playing Foolish in this list, uh, because we got the other additional copies of starter cards in the form of Rabbit, e and stuff like that. So e sort of is a one-for-one -one swap for, uh, for Foolish, uh, because Foolish was strictly there to get to Lee, and it was, like, the worst way to get to Lee. And so, like, with the additional starter cards, Foolish is kind of unnecessary now. So Brilliant Fusion, you're playing 6 copies of Lee. Uh, in the deck versus seven like old lists uh, but i'm playing two copies of transmodify because once you do get access into lee or if you draw like a shine ball or whatever if you draw this card it allows you to turn it into venus which i've already said that venus is like my favorite card in this deck in terms of a starter card it's like the strongest summon in the deck in terms of it just gives you immediately three to four monsters uh so like it's just it's it's a fantastic card like transmodify should definitely be in your list if you're trying to play world chalice and you're trying to have the most impact in terms of comboing because, like, even if you're not comboing off with Venus, if you're comboing off with, like, Gofu or Rabbit or something like that, or, like, Brilliant Fusion Lee or whatever, uh, if you draw into Transmodify off your Ningirsu play, you're almost always at a point where you're able to uh, to uh, put Lee on the board again and then Transmodify it away, and then so that makes it an extender. So, like, it gives you good things to draw into off Ningirsu to continue your plays. Like, Transmodify is just great for the deck, but... Carrying on, one copy of Soul Charge, because why the hell would you not play this card? The card's broken. Uh, one Emergency Teleport for the Chosens. Like I said, this basically replaced Foolish, because instead of Foolishing for Lee and then sending a monster out of your hand to add Lee back and then having to have a play to go alongside of it, Emergency Teleport for Chosen is just a better like starter card and extender overall. Um, so the fact that we can play Chosen now because Beckend is phased out just means that this card basically was a one-for-one -one replace for, uh, for Foolish, but... One copy of World Legacy's Heart, because it's not necessarily too relevant. Um, you could bump this to two. I don't know what you would cut to bump it to two. Uh, but it's searchable off of uh, World Legacy World Chalice for uh, following turn plays. Uh, this deck actually has a lot of good like recovery play uh, in terms of like resource management because of the Exodiuses in the deck. And so if there's any like reasoning to put Exodius to a higher number than two and go the full three copies, then it's definitely that. Because, like, you could definitely follow up plays with Exodius and just reset your resource pool and just basically do your entire combo again. Um, so that's actually just really cool. And then World Legacy's Heart just, like, helps facilitate that even further. So there's things like that to consider. But 
I digress. Last two cards in the deck that make it the 41st and 42nd card are two copies of Twin Twister. Again, I said I wasn't really focusing on building this deck towards going second, uh, but these are cards that I feel like you should probably be maining. Um, and, like, Twin Twister is my preferred card of choice because of the fact that we have Lazuli and Brilliant Fusion in this deck. Um, you can Twin Twister, discarding a vanilla, hit two back row, then immediately follow it up with Brilliant Fusion, sending Lazuli, um, and then add the vanilla back so it turns it into a plus one there. Uh, and a, a, a little bit more than a plus one, actually, because then you're getting a plus off the Lee as well. There's a bunch of different things that go into factors there. But uh, also, Twin Twister is really cool for your uh, first turn play if you're going first because this is a very strong set to have backing up your Waterfront plus Gamma Seal because you can use counters off your uh, Waterfront and then this can basically just refuel three counters on its own because this will be a card that goes to Grave and then the two spells and traps that you hit or the other two spells and traps you hit will be one or two other counters. So like it just it gives you a lot of really good, uh, a lot of really good stuff uh, to deal with. And I'm not too worried about true Draco spells and traps with this because if I'm going second this is usually the first card that I ever play. Um, and if like I'm going, if they're going second, then they already have to deal with Gamma Seal negating all their cards anyway. So like, you can Twin Twister their cards away, and then just Gamma Seal negate the graveyard effects. So that's not really too big of an issue either. But so extra deck time. Uh, I'm playing three copies of M Duck because it comes up in so many combos. With the Emerald being gone, the slot for the third M Duck just basically exists. Um, it's pretty easy to uh, to have that there. And then two copies of Link Spider. Uh, these are for the extra Link combo, obviously, to make it really easy to put stuff up in the two extra monster zones. Uh, one copy of Proxy Dragon, two copies of Eeb, and two copies of Orum for my Link 2s. Uh, so there's five Link 1s and five Link 2s. Um, the second Orum has literally never, ever come up. Um, but, like, I only played it so that, like, if, uh, if like, I got Lithosasmed uh, in the Dino matchup, that they couldn't get rid of both of them. I mean, like, I don't want to be caught, like, with my pants down if there is a need for the second one, but you could probably cut this for, like, another Link 3 or another Firewall or something, the second copy, because the second Aurum has never come up for me at all in any games other than one very niche situation. Uh, but then again, we have, like, Exodius in the deck now, so, like, that recycles everything as well, so I don't know. And Lithosagum is banned, so, like, your opponent being able to take cards out of your extra deck with it in the Dino matchup is a non-existent factor, so... There's a few different things that come into play there that could uh, change this for, like, another Firewall or maybe, like, Topological Bomber Dragon or something like that. I don't know. Things to consider for later. But anyway, uh, one copy of Ningirsu, the World Chalice Warrior. You really only need the one. Uh, one Guy Saber, the Lightning Shadow, because this is really strong in terms of a Link 3, in terms of being able to uh, being able to really support your Soul Charge plays. Uh, but also, otherwise, it's just, you know, it's it's a Link 3 that points down. It's pretty, it's pretty important in some combos. Uh, and then two copies of Firewall Dragon. I don't see the need for a third. Um, if anything, I think that like the second Orum could become the third Firewall Dragon, but at the same time, uh, things are going to change between now and Circuit Break, and there will be other Link 3s or Link 2s that we can fit into the deck on that Orum slot. So not too sure on that in general. But last card in the extra deck is one copy of Gym Knight Seraph Knight for the Brilliant Fusion, and that's basically it. So that's my current list. That's the list that I'm testing right now. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are in the comments down below. As always, uh, basically, like this is just what I've been testing over the past literally like four or five days, and uh, it's definitely per not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. But it's been like incorporating all of my theories of the deck and all my combo tutorials and stuff into it is like basically like. Uh, the the creation of what I would probably play at an event if I was playing an event this weekend. So I, if I was attending the UDS in Florida this weekend, I'd probably be playing this deck uh, just because it's really early in the format and like this deck does have good combo potential um, for like un, like to take like an unknown format by surprise essentially. Uh, but otherwise, not too sure on the future of how I'm going to build this deck. But I do think I do want to play the third Exodius at some point. I just don't know what I'd cut for it. Um, the Foolish might work its way back in by cutting another card, I don't know, there might be more Kaijus put in. Uh, there's a few different things that can change, and I'm only going to know about those changes once I perform some more testing. But anyway, this is the list that I have up until this point, so like I said, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. But as always guys, thanks for watching, drop a like if you want to see more World Chalice combo videos, or more World Chalice videos in general, I guess. Subscribe if you're new here and want to see more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh! content, and links as always in the description to my Facebook fan page and my personal Patreon page. If you really like the content I've been producing and want to help support my ability to continue producing content well into the future, then Patreon is the best way to do so, as well as it gets you 
you access into a bunch of things like monthly raffle giveaways for sizable amounts of Yu-Gi-Oh product, as well as access into my private Discord server. So if you're interested in any of that, then definitely go check out the Patreon and check out the reward tiers that are listed over there. But special thanks as always to Travis Miller, Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, and Troy Perkins, as well as everybody else that is currently supporting me on Patreon this month. You help out a lot more than you will ever know, ever, 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 and you have my eternal gratitude as I always say. But anyway, as I've already said guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, as I've already said, and take care. I will see you in the next video.